Hi there, uh, this is Lana here, and I have an amazing guest from Lithuania here in our studio, mm -hmm. and it's Paolas. He has absolutely incredible testimony, how he got saved and how Jesus Christ touched his life. And right now, we just want him to share a little bit about his life and how he came to Jesus Christ. Paulus, welcome. Mm -hmm. Would Hello. you please start with your name, where you're from, and how did you end up at Hungry Gen? Yeah, my, yeah, as you mentioned, my name is Paulus. Uh, I came here to America from Lithuania when I was looking for a Bible school since I got saved and born again. So I needed some, you know, to get a foundation. Uh, and I happened to, f to meet a friend uh, she, who was already knowing this, this school, this internship program, which I call Practical Bible School. <laughs> uh, so she just, she was praying for a person to come together. And I happened to be that person. That is so awesome it's how like, God yeah, connected you yeah, both, yeah. and that's awesome. And now you are here, yeah. and we're happy to have you. Would you please start sharing um, a little bit about your life and how it was when you were born, into what family were you born, and how did you receive Jesus? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, I, I call my testimony is actually like Jesus' victory over my life because uh, it was really like, you know, it was... <laughs> Uh, I was born in a non-Christian family, uh, meaning that basically they are like atheists, I, I would say. Even though officially we are Catholics in Lithuania, but that means that we are atheists also in a way. So I was raised as a non-Christian, uh, but at, at, at the age 16, at the Easter, I had a strong desire to come to church, to the Catholic church actually, and I was so disappointed because all I see was like money, uh, the priest and like dead in the spirit everything and I just was so like discouraged to follow this tradition and I just moved to atheism straight, straight after and of course I was going in the church on Christmas and Easter but I had my own you know right. image mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I uh, finished the school uh, with a very good grades because I was raised in a small city and in this small city you're only one, t only one ticket to get out of the city is to like to study hard and then to you know go to the capital and start your you know uh, life with a big you know dreams and possibilities in a big city. Mm -hmm. So I started there and I moved from the little city. I was a good boy in a way. I was like mama's boy, like sensitive, you know, and, and everything. Uh, so I came to this big city and since I and since I missed my teens years like studying hard and yeah. working oh, right. so I just you know moved in a new city and all these you know clubs and and you know all, they open up to me you know like this like alcohol you know I, I didn't start smoking but like marijuana I really liked that in the beginning so th it opened up this new world mm -hmm. and basically that's that's how came all the sinful life like sex drugs alcohol just increasing in the following years mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I was studying. I finished my studying. I even what I. What did you study for? I studied like communications okay. and media. Mm -hmm. uh, so my like my how to say my professional life was like going like up. Mm -hmm. I I finished you know like working in advertising and I started in a betting company as a creative director, being like age yes. 23 or something. And then I opened my own business mm -hmm. at 20 at age 25. I would say 24. Mm -hmm. Uh, I opened my own business, like successful business. But meanwhile, meanwhile, I was going really, really down. Like as my profession and my career life was increasing, yeah. but my like my inner life, my mm -hmm. spiritual life, I was dead. I was getting more dead mm -hmm. and getting more into sin. And I was feeling the sin is like mm -hmm. overtaking my my conscience, my heart, as I told them. In, in that mm -hmm. time, I called it my heart. Right. It was getting more mm -hmm. de deceived and more like grieving and empty, empty, and empty. Mm -hmm. And like the girls came in and more drugs, more girls, more parties, more techno, just made me like dead mm -hmm. at age 25. So it was making you numb. You were searching for yeah. something more. And was that satisfying to you to some degree? How did you continue to your search uh, for God and stuff? Well, I was going to the, you know, like to just catching these uh, like experiences in my life, like mm -hmm. traveling, you know, like I was, I was running away from my problems. Right. Sports, traveling, you name it, girls, it's a very like, I don't know, pleasure experiences. Like I was starting to use this MDMA pills, you know, and the clubs, listening mm -hmm. to techno music for 10 hours and oh, dancing wow. for 10 hours or eight hours on Fridays and Saturdays, mm -hmm. just to forget everything. 
and then come back on Monday and start again working. And then at age 25, I really was like, uh, after New Year's, it was 2016, the beginning, I realized that I'm like, I need to change something in my life because I'm going like very wrong mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started like psychology, you know, like psychiat psychiatry, uh, you counseling. You went to study that? Yeah. Or you no, no, actually going to, to, to the classes okay. and reading right, and also right. to the psychologist. Mm -hmm. They almost prescribed me a medicine. And uh, everything happened like, you know, like self-help. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it didn't actually help me. Just mm -hmm. like a little bit revealed because I could talk to someone. Right. And then my friend actually at, uh, at the summer, 2016, he said like, Paulus, you won't make it your own. You need to meditate. Mm -hmm. Like really like go into these spiritual practices and start a spiritual life. And before that, I wasn't a spiritual person at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like sensitive and yeah. nice, but mm -hmm. dead inside. So I started this Kundalini meditation, which is called Sahaja Yoga. So your friend uh, was a friend in university that no. you went to? Or just a friend? That, and he introduced you to this uh, Kundalini practices? He was, he, he is actually, uh, was a colleague at that time. Oh, okay. Like in my oh, business okay. colleague mm -hmm. in a way, like a partner mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, he was in this practice for 10 years. Wow. And he said like, it really helped my life. So it should help you all also. And uh, yeah, I started this Kundalini meditation and I went there and I meet these people. They seem to be happier than others. Can you tell us a little bit more? <laughs> what are those um, Kundalini meditation or whatever they're called? What are they involved in itself? Like, how do you do it? Uh, yeah, basically just like I came there to the class and you just like they teach us about so it's chakras. A, it's a group of people? Yeah, it's a group of people okay. in the beginning, but also they teach you how to do it at your own at home. Mm -hmm. So I was going both in the group uh, and also at, at home. Mm -hmm. You just basically sit uh, silently and focus your attention and try to catch the energy flowing, you know, from the bottom to the to the top mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. And you just have to like, you know, it's like a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you kind of mentally? Yeah, kind of mentally and you kind of like p uh, feeling this, uh, the peace mm -hmm. and like, you, I mean, thoughtless. The goal is to be thoughtless, wow. thoughtless. And that's like you're observing your thoughts and becoming more and more thoughtless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then you feel this kind of energy. And the goal is like to be realized, like the, when, the, when the energy comes up and it goes through your, like, through your scalp. And basically it's, it's also involves the chakras. As they say. What's chakras? Chakras like energetic centers for okay. some like, you mm -hmm. know, we have like seven chakras mm -hmm. and this energy when it goes, it moves some things in our like personality and then you get become self-realized. Mm -hmm. The goal mm -hmm. is to become self-realized, like mm -hmm. basically become a god okay. yourself. Okay. Wow. So it's like so an evolution all the focus process. Goes on yourself. Yeah, on your own on your own uh, mm -hmm. actions to become self-realized. And mm -hmm. I was I was introduced to this, you know, to this system, to this evolution path, mm -hmm. this incarnation path, yeah, this energy yeah, path, yeah. that you can do it on your own, that you can become enlightened, and then your problems will disappear. Right, right. And believe me, it helps. I, with these practices, I remove my addictions. Okay. They remove, and you look how devil works in this way. He removes the addictions, mm -hmm. so you can invite others to right. this system, mm -hmm. which can help uh, them. But for devil, it's easy to remove addiction. Yes, if, if, yes. if you if you go like into the like the evil practices, right, which will lead right. to destruction right. later. And he will have a possession of you then. Yes, exactly. So that's what happened with me. Mm -hmm. After three months, I get to happen out of body experience with these practices. Tell us about it a little bit. More. Yeah, this this kundalini is like an energy they say, right. which rests in, like in the back of the bone, mm -hmm. and when it rises up, it goes through all the chakras, and it's like like phew, explosion. Wow. And then you like you can feel it actually. This so kind of you were meditating like yeah. for how many hours to reach that enlightenment state? Uh, this was the beginning. So I was my meditation was like 15, 20 minutes by that uh, by that experience before that experience. Right. And when this experience happened, it took me like 40 minutes. Uh -huh. I was in blissfulness. Uh -huh. I was in ecstasy. And oh, I saw my all my life. Uh -huh. I was like connected to the universe. Uh -huh. Like really, I felt there is a creator. Uh -huh. This was like, and now I think that it was illegal. I, I don't think it happened to, to me, the real creator. It was right. like devil. Mm -hmm. But he Deception. introduced himself as a creator, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And I was like really blissful and I felt an ecstasy. I felt that I, I'm, I'm actually, I was there. M my whole soul, I was out of body and I was eyes was closed, but I was like really not in my body. It was wow. felt really nice. Mm -hmm. 
felt light. How long did that last? 40 minutes. And I saw the, the whole experience. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like something like 40 minutes. And I saw the like my life movie, like what, why I was depressed, why I was addicted. Everything was just like. Mm -hmm. And then I woke, like I woke up and I realized that the, the, the spirit life is existing. Before, life, before that, I was just playing with the meditation. But after that, I was like so really now strongly you were encouraged. To the reality of the yeah, spiritual yeah, world. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then basically after this experience, I just jumped to all kinds of practices. I started with Vedas, like Hindu, Hindu scriptures, mm -hmm. Bhagavad Gita, then like Buddhism. I started with Vipassana, which is like Buddhist meditation, mm -hmm. like very harsh for like 10 hours a day. These retreats for 10 hours a day, 10 days. Wow. Wow. I uh, also went to India straight after with this. With this what did you do in India? What were you searching again? I went there with this Ayurveda community, uh, with the monks and a group like spiritual seekers. Mm -hmm. you know, there are also like spiritual seekers who seek for spirit things, mm -hmm. but in other realms. Right. So I went with them, with the group, and the leader was a monk. Mm -hmm. And we went to these Ayurvedic temples, the Vedic temples, Krishna temples. Also, we went to these Ayurveda uh, like retreat centers to just learn more mm -hmm. and to dig deeper mm -hmm. into the scriptures of the Hindus mm -hmm. and to the wisdom of there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so how did, um, how long this process of you being involved that deeply into these practices, how long was it for you? By that time I was a businessman, mm -hmm. so I had like spare money and right. a free time. And you so I dig deep, like you can't imagine, I mean, like I was really like, you know, reading, I read like 100 books in these two years, I say two with two, years. two, okay. two years, mm -hmm. like fully, yeah. fully engaged, like full time, wow. mm -hmm. like we had 100, 100 books, like autobiography of Yogi, like all this kind of Bhagavad Gita scriptures of Eastern mysticism, mm -hmm. autobiographies of these yogis, chakras, healings, and all kind of shamanism, I was reading that. Uh -huh. So you were involved uh, that deeply into all of that stuff. Can you please tell me, um, what is the main point of those religions? What are they mm -hmm. all trying to achieve? There is actually a difference between New Age spirituality mm -hmm. and the Eastern mysticism. Mm -hmm. But the New Age comes from Eastern mysticism, which is basically this old ancient practice like Tibetan Buddh Buddhism, Hinduism, like Raja Yoga. It's like really quality, old school, ancient practices, mm -hmm. which has the foundation and the even gurus who are teaching mm -hmm. that and scriptures and everything. Mm -hmm. But they're like coming from the evil one is the same. Mm -hmm. New Age is more like the pre-digested practices for Western people. Right, okay. Which is okay. like money involved, you know, you pay for yoga. Mm -hmm. It's like, like playing a little bit. You don't dig, dig deeper into the truth. Mm -hmm. But the real thing is like you dig deep. Mm -hmm. So I was like in the middle. Okay. In that, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, and, and these practices like what do they focus on? And they focus on the soul evolution. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's like uh, saying that we are we are not here. We are living not one life. Okay. We are here for many lives, and we evo uh, we are growing in these lives. Right. We right. die and we raise again in and next incarnation to become better person. Mm -hmm. And also, they believe that they are kind of I would say like mostly that we are gods, mm -hmm. but just we don't realize that. That's why we need to grow, grow, grow in our spirituality. Mm -hmm to grow and to self-actualize mm -hmm. and to reach the consciousness of Buddha, mm -hmm. consciousness of Krishna or Christ even. Oh, wow. They even teach they that. They even teach about Christ. Yeah, yes, yes. They even reach, to, they're teaching to how to become like Christ, mm -hmm. but in like Christ consciousness. Okay. They don't teach anything about conscience or repentance. They teach that you can make it by your own right. actions. Right, and yet all the focus, it brings back to yourself and about what you need to do right in now. a way in a way I would say that they also teach about love and how you have to love uh, each other and there are some good points mm -hmm. which are taken for the bad things yeah. but basically they are teaching that you can do it on your own right. you can do it on your own and all these practices are actually self-centered in a way yes, they are self-centered because uh -huh. they saying that when you get enlightened then you serve people then you get enlightened and like focus to you, to you, mm -hmm. practice to you. Now, did it ever happen to you um, that you got so enlightened that you started to just serve people and love people? Of course. And how, uh, can you continue with your testimony? How, how did it, like after those two years of search and being involved in all that stuff, what happened next? Yes. I, Where did you end up? Yes. Uh, so uh, 
these two years was happening really intense for me, like 2016, 17, and 18 even. Mm -hmm. Was really intense, like I was like just going like, I was wearing crystals, I was going like as a vegetarian, I started my uh, like, experiments with nutrition, because they will put the thought that the, the animals are making me dirty spiritually. So you need to eat, like eat like high vibrational foods to keep me like very spiritual and very uh, clear, mm -hmm. very like uh, pure. Mm -hmm. Purity comes from food. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing all, I was eating fruits and I was doing this meditation, yoga, breathing exercises, wearing crystals. Wow. I was like really like searching for this truth. Mm -hmm. the, my main obstacle was searching for the truth. Mm -hmm. But I end up after these two years of this crazy experiences like uh, I was end up like drinking juices mm -hmm. last year actually for 35 days green oh. green juices just juice just juices days. because mm -hmm. I thought it it may it will make me more uh, more spiritual more like more open for the for yeah. the vibrational mm -hmm. for the for the high frequency vibrations of the yeah. spirits. Wow. So what happened after 35 days juicing? After this uh, yeah, after this experience, uh, I ended up like in the hell actually. But I would want to like highlight that it was not f physical hell only. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if you combine like <laughs> this uh, high, uh, high fa this fasting, this real harsh fasting, mm -hmm. and also the spiritual practice as meditation, mm -hmm. you can go crazy. Mm -hmm. You like basically you're like not so mentally, emotionally, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually mm -hmm. like really bad condition. Mm -hmm. And in this condition, I was really desperate. I was hopeless. I couldn't stand any people around me. I was annoyed by everyone, by my family, by my friends. Since, since I was in business, I was isolating myself. I could allow me to isolate myself in my room. So instead of loving people, you were actually I hate people, hating people. But I didn't okay. want to admit that even. Yes, because okay. it was so hard. I was trying to love people. I was doing all these practices to love people. Mm -hmm. And I was practicing and reading to love people more. I ended up like hating them mm -hmm. in my heart, but loving them from the outside. Yeah. It was like big conflict. And then like uh, I it just happened like I was interested in Christ. I happened to know that Christ was real in a way, mm -hmm. but I didn't didn't know him in a person. Yeah. I just know about him that there was yes. a Christ, but the devil put me other Christ. My Christ that time was like mystic Christ, mystic. enlightened master, mm -hmm. new age Christ, mm -hmm. Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. This kind of Christ, not biblical at all. Mm -hmm. I loved him, mm -hmm. but I didn't know him. Can you talk about this a little bit more and um, for those who will be watching, maybe um, tell us um, about that mystical Christ that New Age teaches, just a little bit more. Yeah. Who is he? Who do they believe he, wow. Jesus is? Basically, uh, if you go to India and to these ashrams, they love Christ. Mm -hmm. They say, yeah, Christ is good, Christ is okay. And it's like a genre classic. You say like, yeah, he's good, but the same is Krishna and Buddha. Right. He's one of, the, one of which. He's one of the, one of the godheads. Mm -hmm. So basically, his consciousness, his uh, yeah, his spirituality is the same as Buddha's or okay. Krishna's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so like basically, they teach that he's enlightened master. Mm -hmm. He actually and he got enlightened in India by other Hindu like gods. Wow, okay. <laughs> and this Christ yeah. is the same is is God, but he allows his tolerant. And he allows like Buddha and Krishna to be around him because they are the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like also like incarnating, mm -hmm. like. Uh, so completely opposite. Completely of opposite, yes. And mm -hmm. and you can become as a Christ yourself okay. if you follow his teachings, mm -hmm. like mysticism teachings.